right now at Joint Base San Antonio. Something extraordinary is happening. A sleek red-tailed jet just landed 10 days ago, carrying with it the future of American air dominance. Inside that cockpit, pilots are learning to fly an aircraft that doesn't officially exist yet. The F-47, America's first sixth-generation fighter, won't take its first flight until 2028, but training has already begun. And here's the twist. The jet they're using costs a fraction of what it's preparing them for, yet it's revolutionizing everything we thought we knew about pilot training. This isn't just about learning to fly. This is about preparing for a fighter so advanced, so classified, that even mentioning its capabilities could change the balance of global power. The connection between these two aircraft runs deeper than anyone outside the Air Force truly understands. What started as a simple trainer replacement has evolved into the most sophisticated pilot development system ever created. And it all centers around one critical mission, getting American pilots ready for a fighter that will define air warfare for the next 50 years. Welcome to Jet Insight, where we break down the technology and training that keeps America's skies secure. Today, we're diving into something that's been unfolding right under our noses, a training revolution that's preparing our pilots for the most advanced fighter jet ever conceived. What you're about to discover isn't just about new planes. It's about how the United States Air Force is ensuring that when the F-47 takes to the skies, our pilots will already be years ahead of any adversary. If you're proud of what our Air Force is achieving, type PROUD in the comments below. The T-7 Red Hawk arrives December 5th, 2025. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Trott brought something special to Texas. As commander of the 99th Flying Training Squadron at Randolph Air Force Base, he piloted the first operational T-7 Red Hawk from Boeing's factory in St. Louis to its new home. This wasn't just another delivery flight. This was history landing on American soil. The T-7 Red Hawk represents something our training program hasn't seen in 60 years, a completely new advanced jet trainer designed from scratch. For six decades, our pilots learned on the T-38 Talon, a remarkable aircraft that served with distinction. But here's the reality. The T-38 was designed to train pilots for Vietnam-era jets like the F-4 Phantom and F-105 Thunder Chief. Every single aircraft, the T-38 was built to prepare pilots for retired more than 30 years ago. The T-7 changes everything. This isn't an upgraded version of something old. Boeing and their Swedish partner Saab built this from a blank sheet of paper using cutting-edge digital design. The entire aircraft went from concept to first flight in just 36 months. They used 3D modeling and virtual testing so advanced that it improved engineering quality by 75% and cut assembly time by 80%. But here's what really matters. The T-7 was specifically engineered to prepare pilots for aircraft like the F-22 Raptor, the F-35 Lightning II, the B-21 Raider Stealth Bomber, and yes, the F-47. Its cockpit looks and feels like a fifth generation fighter. Multiple displays, touchscreen interfaces, stadium seating that gives both instructor and student excellent visibility. When a pilot transitions from the T-7 to an operational fighter, there's no learning curve for the basics. They already know the environment. Major General Clark Quinn put it simply, the gap between simulator and actual flight in the T-38 was significant. With the T-7, that gap essentially disappears. The simulator is so accurate that pilots report it feels almost identical. That's not just convenient. That's a force multiplier. Why this matters for the F-47. Now let's talk about what all this training is actually for. March 21st, 2025, President Donald Trump stood in the Oval Office and made an announcement that sent shockwaves through the defense world. Boeing won the contract for America's next fighter. The Air Force is going to be awarding the contract for the next generation air dominance platform to Boeing. The F-47, over $20 billion for engineering and development alone. The F-47 isn't just another fighter. It's our first sixth-generation combat aircraft. While most details remain classified, what we do know is remarkable. This jet will fly faster than Mach 2, 
carry advanced stealth capabilities that make the F-22 look conventional and operate with a combat radius exceeding 1,000 nautical miles. But here's the real game changer. The F-47 will act as a quarterback for drone swarms. Before we dive deeper, please take a second to like this video and subscribe. Over 98% of viewers watch without subscribing. It costs you nothing, but it means a lot to us. The Air Force envisions each F-47 controlling between two and five autonomous drones called collaborative combat aircraft. These aren't remote-controlled toys. We're talking about sophisticated unmanned fighters like the YFQ-42A, designed by General Atomics for close-in dogfighting, and the YFQ-44A Fury from Andrel Industries, capable of both air-to-air -air and ground attack missions. Imagine one pilot sitting in an F-47, directing a formation of six aircraft total. The drones handle the high-risk penetrations into enemy airspace, scout ahead, deliver weapons, jam enemy radar, and if necessary, draw enemy fire. The human pilot remains in control, making strategic decisions. But the raw numbers, the mass of aircraft, comes from the unmanned systems. This fundamentally changes what a fighter pilot needs to know. It's not enough anymore to master stick and rudder skills and weapons employment. Now they need to think like mission commanders, managing multiple platforms simultaneously, processing data from advanced sensors across their entire formation, and making split-second decisions that affect not just their aircraft, but their entire drone team. You can't learn that overnight. You can't wait until a pilot reaches their operational F-47 squadron and then suddenly teach them to control five drones while flying supersonic into contested airspace. That training needs to start from day one. That training starts in the T-7. The Secret Preparation Timeline Here's something most people don't realize. The F-47 program has been flying for five years already. Not the production aircraft. Those don't exist yet. But experimental X-planes, secret demonstrators that have been testing technologies and proving concepts since 2020. Both Boeing and Lockheed Martin built classified prototypes under contracts with DARPA. These aircraft first flew in 2019 and 2022, logging several hundred flight hours each. Think about what that means. While the public just learned about the F-47 this year, the Air Force has been evaluating actual flying sixth generation technology for half a decade. General David Alvin, Air Force Chief of Staff, confirmed this publicly. For the past five years, the X-planes for this aircraft have been quietly laying the foundation for the F-47, flying hundreds of hours, testing cutting-edge concepts, and proving that we can push the envelope of technology with confidence. This is why Boeing could announce that the first production F-47 is already being built, just months after winning the contract. The design is mature. The technologies have been tested. When the F-47 takes its first official flight in 2028, it won't be a gamble. It will be the culmination of nearly a decade of secret development. But here's the challenge. All that testing involved experimental test pilots and specialists. Now the Air Force needs to prepare regular operational pilots, hundreds of them, to fly these incredibly advanced machines. And they need those pilots ready when the F-47 enters service in 2029 and starts operational deployment in the early 2030s. That's an incredibly tight timeline. Traditional fighter training takes years. The whole process, from civilian to combat-ready fighter pilot, typically takes about two years minimum, often longer. So how do you compress that timeline without sacrificing quality? The answer is already taking shape in Texas. The T-7 is designed to adapt. Its open architecture means software can be continuously updated. As technologies advance, as new threats emerge, as the F-47's capabilities are refined, the T-7's training systems can evolve right alongside them. Lieutenant General Gregory Kreuter made this clear. Software is the future. As long as we can upgrade the T-7 systems, we can keep up with the basics of what the F-47 will require. How the training actually works. Let's get practical. What does this training actually look like? First, understand that the T-7 isn't just replacing the T-38 one for one. The Air Force is redesigning the entire advanced training syllabus around this aircraft's capabilities. They're not just teaching pilots to fly. They're teaching them to think differently about air combat the T-7's cockpit features multiple high-resolution displays, 
just like the F-35, and what we expect in the F-47. Student pilots aren't staring at old-fashioned analog gauges. They're managing touchscreens, interpreting data from simulated advanced sensors, and learning to process information the way they'll need to in actual combat. The T-7 was specifically designed for high-G maneuvers and high-angle-of-attack flight. It can simulate the handling characteristics of modern fighters far better than the T-38 ever could. When a student pulls hard on the stick, the T-7 responds in ways that mirror operational aircraft. The physical experience becomes familiar long before they ever strap into an F-22 or F-35, let alone an F-47. But the real revolution happens in the simulators. The T-7's ground-based training systems feature 360-degree high-fidelity visuals. Lieutenant Colonel Trott described it perfectly. Everything in the simulator, the switches, the displays, the controls, matches exactly what's in the real aircraft. There's no mental translation required. The simulators even recreate G-force sensations using sophisticated motion systems. It's not perfect, but it provides sensory feedback that helps students build muscle memory and understand the physical demands of high-performance flight. Now layer on the integrated live, virtual, and constructive training capability. Real T-7 jets can fly actual missions while connected to simulators on the ground and computer-generated threats, all sharing the same battle space. An instructor can throw scenarios at students that would be impossible or too dangerous to replicate with real aircraft. Enemy fighters can violate physics. Missiles can behave unpredictably. Systems can fail in ways that test a pilot's decision-making under pressure. This prepares pilots not just for flying, but for thinking. Modern air combat happens at incredible speeds with overwhelming amounts of information. The pilot who processes that information fastest and makes the best decisions wins. The T-7 training system teaches that cognitive speed from the beginning. And remember, all of this is preparing pilots for an aircraft where they'll also be managing drone wingmen. The F-47's mission and capabilities. Let's talk about what the F-47 will actually do, because understanding the mission helps explain why this training matters so much. The F-47 is being designed to replace the F-22 Raptor, which itself is considered the world's most capable air superiority fighter. But the threats have evolved. China is developing its own sixth-generation fighters. Russia continues advancing its aerospace capabilities. The areas where America needs to operate, particularly in the Pacific, are protected by increasingly sophisticated anti-access systems. The F-47 answers these challenges with capabilities that sound like science fiction, but are very real. Its stealth goes beyond what the F-22 and F-35 achieve. Secretary of Defense Pete Hegseth called it a jet that sends a very direct, clear message to our allies that we're not going anywhere, and to our enemies that we can project power around the globe, unimpeded, for generations to come. That thousand-plus nautical mile combat radius isn't just impressive, it's strategic. It means the F-47 can operate from bases farther from the fight. It can patrol vast expanses of ocean or desert. It can penetrate deep into contested airspace and still have the fuel to fight and return home. The aircraft will feature adaptive cycle engines, power plants that can adjust their operation for maximum efficiency during cruise or maximum thrust during combat. This gives pilots flexibility that previous generations never had. But here's what really sets the F-47 apart. It's being designed from the start to require less maintenance and fewer support personnel than current fighters. Air Force Chief of Staff General Alvin emphasized this. The F-47 will have higher availability than our fifth-generation fighters and take significantly less manpower and infrastructure to deploy. In a potential conflict, especially one in the vast Pacific, that matters enormously. The Air Force plans to field at least 185 F-47s. Each one will cost roughly $300 million. Expensive, but actually less than initial F-22 unit costs when adjusted for inflation. And remember, each F-47 effectively multiplies into a formation of six aircraft when you include its drone wingmen. For those of us who served or who deeply appreciate what our armed forces achieve, watching this capability come together is remarkable. Communities of veterans and military enthusiasts are following these developments closely, supporting the next generation of warriors who'll fly these incredible machines. What comes next? 
So where does all this go from here? The timeline is aggressive, but achievable. Right now, instructor pilots at Joint Base San Antonio Randolph are familiarizing themselves with the T-7. They're not teaching students yet. They're becoming experts themselves. Maintenance personnel are learning the aircraft's systems, practicing repairs, understanding its digital architecture. Boeing specialists are on site, helping establish procedures and training the trainers. Over the next year, more T-7s will arrive. The Air Force expects to reach initial operational capability with 14 aircraft at the 99th Flying Training Squadron by August 2027. At that point, student pilots will begin flowing through the new training program. Other bases will follow. Columbus Air Force Base in Mississippi, Laughlin in Texas, Vance in Oklahoma, and Shepard in Texas will all receive T-7s in the coming years. Eventually, all 351 aircraft will be delivered completely replacing the T-38 fleet. Meanwhile, the F-47 program is accelerating. Boeing's Phantom Works Division, their equivalent of Lockheed's, famous Skunk Works, is pushing development at unprecedented speed. The company made massive investments in new facilities in St. Louis, Missouri, building production lines for six-generation fighters before they even won the contract. The first F-47 is already in production, not just designed, not just planned, actually being built. Component manufacturing is underway. Assembly jigs are ready. When 2028 arrives and that first F-47 takes flight, it will mark a transition point in American air power that rivals the introduction of the jet age itself. And the pilots who will fly it, many of them are training right now in T-7 Red Hawks, learning the skills, developing the mindset, and building the capabilities they'll need to dominate the skies in aircraft that don't even exist yet in operational form. This is American ingenuity and military excellence working exactly as intended. We identify the threats, develop the technology to counter them, and prepare our people to employ that technology with unmatched skill. The F-47 will be the most advanced fighter on Earth, but it's only as good as the pilots who fly it. And those pilots, they're getting ready right now, one T-7 flight at a time. Conclusion the combination of the T-7 Red Hawk and the F-47 represents more than just new equipment. It's a complete reimagining of how we prepare pilots for the future of air combat. From the red-tailed trainer touching down in Texas to the classified sixth-generation fighter being assembled in Missouri, every piece of this system is designed to keep America's air dominance unquestioned for decades to come. Our pilots will be ready, our technology will be superior, and our adversaries will know that the skies belong to the United States Air Force. If you found this valuable, hit that like button and subscribe to Jet Insight for more on the technology keeping our nation secure.